Hello and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam and on this channel I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. Hopefully it will whet your appetite to learn more and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video I'm going to be talking about tools and equipment. So let's get started. Okay so I thought I'd do safety equipment first. Safety goggles or glasses. I don't always use these. I generally only use them during the beginning of the mashing process when I'm dealing with the hot liquid and then also sometimes during distillation. The gloves I really only use if I'm going to be co-fermenting or I'm going to be using hazardous chemicals. With the co-fermentation if I'm using like bacteria and stuff I don't want to get it on my hands and I also don't want whatever natural bacteria I have on my hands even though you know I clean them. I don't want that getting in there as well. And then I got my little eye wash bottles. I got two of these and I generally have one filled up sitting around just in case. I don't know if I've showed this before but it's pretty easy. Fill it with distilled water and then you can see the inside of that. This little tray in here. Fills with water and then it'll come out the side. So you press this up against your eye socket and you just squeeze the bottle. And it keeps pushing water up against your eye. It's very uncomfortable to use, but it's a lot it's a lot less uncomfortable than, you know, having citric acid in your eye or hot wort or whatever. But uh, the four main things I think most people should have and should use. Safety goggles or the glasses, long sleeve shirt, long sleeve pants, and closed toed shoes. In any, if you ever go work in any lab, these are the minimum requirements for PPE. But then they also require a lab coat, which you've seen my lab coat before. And I also have a denim apron it's pictured here that I wear. If I'm not wearing my lab coat, I'll be wearing this thing. But yeah, that's generally the safety equipment that I use. I can't really think of anything. Oh yes, a smartphone or a mirror. So you want something with a really reflective surface. And I do this every time I have to put my still back together after I start it up. Once I can see that the liquid has re risen to the top of the or the vapor has risen to the point of no return I'll go around with the mirror or my smartphone if I misplace the mirror and I'll look for vapor leaks because it'll condense on the surface of this and it becomes very easy to see so that's another really good piece of safety equipment to have on you a mirror let's go on to the next group of equipment okay so when I'm about to start mashing the, probably one of the most important things I need to have is my notebook you need to take notes as one of my lab professors used to say, if you didn't write it down, it didn't happen. And that's because we humans are not very good at recording and storing data long term, especially a lot of the smaller details. So it's good to keep notes, especially if you want to be able to recreate any of your recipes. Next up, it would be my mashing vessel, which is a 16 gallon pot from Brewer's Best. I'll throw a picture up for you to see. And then I also have this uh, five gallon paint mixer. Pick these up at most hardware stores. And then I also have my carboy mixer that you may have seen in the last video going on dissolved oxygen. I have two different thermometers. This simple one from X-Tech. It's waterproof and it floats. I bought it because it floats. Then a simple infrared one. I have a whole bunch of these brew bags. Large scale and a small scale. Obviously you don't need all the things that I have but I'm just showing you what I do have. And it makes just jumping into any recipe I want a lot easier. So along with these brew bags, because they can get pretty heavy, I also have a, a, a six foot A-frame la step ladder, right? And where's the, uh, there we go. So, you know, I got my A-frame ladder, step ladder, and we have the pot under it. So what I have, is this ratcheting pulley, right? So I attach this to the brew bag and then you just pull it up and it holds it in place from the top of this ladder here. And I just drilled a hole and put an eye bolt through it. And I just hang this from the top of it. And then I can let this brew bag just hang there and drain down into the pot. Another handy tool to have is a power drill. Battery or or uh, with a cord. Either one will work great. But that's it for the mashing tools. I don't really think I use anything else with any regularity. Actually there is one other thing I wanted to talk about. That's water. So I have 
Let's see if we can move some of this stuff out of the way. I actually have two of these. This is my backup. You can see aquatic life. So it's essentially just a reverse osmosis and it also has a deionization filter in it. And it comes with a faucet adapter. So I don't have this permanently in place. I just pump water through it when I need it. So I got two of these and I use this. If I'm doing a new recipe I haven't done before, I will typically use this. And then the next time I do the recipe, I'll just use regular tap water. And then I compare the outcome. But for all my dilutions where I'm proofing down, I use this water or some distilled water. But yeah, so I mean, obviously you don't need one of these, or if you already have one of these, then I'd say, you know, use it. I have noticed differences with RO water versus regular tap water. And it could just be because I live somewhere with what is rated as very hard water. It's above 180 milligrams per liter of calcium carbonate equivalent, I think is what they do. So yes, very hard water. But this thing comes in pretty handy. And it was easy to put together. Yeah, here's a better picture. So yeah, see, I can just connect this to the faucet. There's a hose down here where the water comes out. But really out of all these things, the only thing you, I would say anyone really needs is a good scale. I tested mine with just water, like one liter of water weighs one kilogram. So it's a pretty easy test. But yeah, the scale and like the brew bag is really the only two things out of all the, oh, and a thermometer. Three things. These are really the only three things you need, I would say, to start mashing properly, as well as a vessel to mash in, of course. So let's go into the next set of equipment. Okay, so here are some of the tools that I use for fermenting. All right, so first off, we have my large fermenter. This is a 121 ga sorry, 121 liters. It's the Rubbermaid Animal Stopper. Supposedly it's not all that good at stopping animals. The reason I bought this is because it has these handles here, right? And these handles fold down and they fold up. And when they fold up, they latch into a ridge around the lid and pull it down for better sealing. It's part of the animal stopping part of it. It's not completely airtight, but I also put some uh, weather sealing around it. And now it works out pretty good. When I'm going to ferment, I flip the handles up, pulls the lid down, put these rubber straps over it, and just leave it until it's finished. And then in the top of the lid, it also has this rubber plug. And what I did was I took one of my number eight stoppers, drilled a bigger hole in it, and I stick some clear plastic tubing into it. And then I run it into a five gallon bucket with some water and some star sand, and that's my airlock. The other type of bucket that I use, which is probably more often, are these seven gallon white buckets. Similar to a five gallon bucket that you've probably used, but it's seven gallons, right? So I bought these. Luckily, they also use five gallon pail lids. And I already had these lids here with the spout and the reason I bought the spout is because it fits a number eight and a number seven stopper perfectly. So if I'm using the seven gallon bucket, right, I can just stick one of these number seven stoppers in there. It's either a three piece airlock or an S bend airlock and get to fermenting. I also have one of those pale lid openers. It does less damage to the lid than using your hands. What else? I got my pH meter over here because it's important to try and track pH, especially if you're doing something like a sugar wash or a molasses because the pH likes to drop. Temperature meter, temperature meter, thermometer, dissolved oxygen meter. I have, let's see, yeah. So these three top hydrometers measure specific gravity. These two top ones here also measure bricks and potential alcohol. And then this one is my proof and trail hydrometer, which is just zero to 200 proof and zero to 100% the trail part. Then I have three refractometers. Uh, the first one here is, I think this is bricks and potential alcohol. Yeah, so bricks and potential alcohol, although I don't really use it for potential alcohol. But sometimes I like to compare it to this to see what I get. The next one is bricks and specific gravity, which I uh, like to also like to compare to these for specific gravity. And then this last one is just alcohol, zero to 80%. And again, I like to compare this to the proof and trail hydrometer. And they're usually pretty close. But yeah, that's essentially all I use for fermentation. Oh, I also, for the, at the end of fermentation, when I, after I've 
let it settle. So either I clarify naturally or sometimes I'll stick it in my freezer or I'll use clarifying agents and then I rack. I use this auto siphon. But if I'm going to be fermenting with the big boy, I just use some plastic tubing and my mouth to siphon it out. Because that uh, auto siphon is the diameter of the tube is too small and it takes forever. But yeah, these are my fermentation tools. I don't really think there's a whole lot more. I mean, there's the notebook, of course. That's pretty much it for the fermentation. And then I've already showed parts of my still. But let's look at some of the other tools I have for more unique things that I do. Okay, so now it's time for more of my tools, but this time they're more lab centric. So I'm going to start with these. I should have shown these in my last video, but Kim wipes from Kim Tech. I use these to clean off my refractometers because they're lint free and they won't scratch the glass. The, and that's what these are specifically made for. They're called delicate task wipers and they're found in, you know, labs everywhere. They're ridiculously expensive for what they are. That's one of the things you can buy if you want to, I guess, prolong the life of your refractometer. Anyway, so let's go with the rest of the stuff here. So found my old safety glasses. Um, so I got this. This is normally a meat injector, so for putting marinade in meat. But I use it if I want to take a sample from a ferment and not break the Krausen or minimize breaking the Krausen, right? I can stick it in, I can get a 100 milliliter sample, and I can test that, or I can go back for another 100 milliliters, and it only puts a hole in it this big. And it works great for this process too. When I'm done, I can just sort of fill in the Krausen by smushing it together with the tip of this thing, and that's that. Then I've shown my pipetter before, two to 10 milliliters and then I got a bag of tips. I have a second one of these. When I first bought this one and I bought the tips, the tips didn't fit. So then I bought a second one, like a different brand, and the tips didn't fit that one either. So it wasn't the pipetter that was wrong, it was those tips. So then I bought another bag of tips from a different source and it fit both of these. So now I got two of these things. And then I got a smaller one for microliter size samples. This is another pipetter. But this one is for glass pipettes, which I'll show you in a second. Anyone who's ever worked in a lab and used those squeezy ball things, I, I hate those things, so I splurged and I bought this. But here are the glass pipettes. I'm not going to take it out of its packaging, but this is a 10 milliliter serological pipette, so it goes from zero, and then once all the liquid is left out of the tip, that is 10 milliliters. There are um, more pipettes, which would have one to 10 on them instead. So that's the difference. Serological usually goes from zero to empty and more pipettes goes from one to 10. And then you leave whatever's left in the end. So what else have we got? Uh, long neck measuring cup. This thing's super handy. I got two of these. This I just found. I haven't used this thing in a long time. It's a manual vacuum pump. I have an actual uh, electric vacuum pump that I use instead. I guess this is just for backups. Mortar and pestle. A lot of you probably may have one of these. You may have one in your kitchen. I use this if I'm making botanicals, botanical based things. Bunch of 500 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks. One liter Erlenmeyer flasks. And then I got this parafilm, two inch parafilm. So essentially what happens is it's this weird, here, I'll take a piece out. Let me get some scissors here. This stuff is for sealing, or at least this two inch stuff is for sealing uh, flasks you can get it in different sizes but it's it's um it's like this waxy material see it's like this weird waxy material and you can stretch it right essentially you can use it to seal off the mouth of a flask right pull it down sort of like saran wrap right? 
So that's what that's used for. It's called parafilm. One liter beakers, 600 milliliter beakers. I got these 250 milliliter reagent bottles. I want to get some one liter reagent bottles too. Got a couple of 50 milliliter volumetric flasks. I want to get some bigger ones as well. So these, you probably can't really see it, but there's a line on the neck here. And when you fill this up to that line with a liquid that's at 20 degrees Celsius, there's going to be exactly 50 milliliters in here. Got a bunch of 10 milliliter graduated cylinders, 1,000 milliliter graduated cylinders, 500 milliliter graduated cylinders. Then I got a couple of these, I've shown these before, 320 milliliter graduated cylinders, but they're they're from the vintage shop. So I don't know if I could would trust that it's actually 320 milliliters. Maybe it is, I don't know. I just use these as hydrometer test cylinders because they're really tall and you don't have to use a whole lot of liquid. Um, yes, the last thing I wanted to talk about was this. This is a hops spider, also known as a hops basket. I don't use it for hops anymore though. I use it just to put botanicals into my uh, still, right? Just fill it up, screw the lid on, and then I just use a bit of cotton string and I just hang it in there. Hop spider. These things are handy. Fill it up with botanicals, however much you want, whatever botanical you want, and it'll keep the solids out of out of the the still, so you don't scorch it. This is called a loop. This is used for doing, uh, well, at least I use it for doing yeast and bacteria experiments. So it's just like an aluminum rod. And then at the end of the rod, there's this coiled up wire that ends in a loop. So the method to use this is you'd heat up the tip, this wire part here. So you know that there's no other bacteria or yeast or anything on it. Let it cool down, move it over to your sample, rub it in your sample or dip it in your sample if it's a bottle. Then move it over to your, your Petri dish with your agar. Wipe it on your agar, close your petri dish, then you just take this and you heat it back up for your next sample. So the last thing I wanted to show, even though I'm not actually gonna, actually I might show it. I don't have a microscope because uh, I was going to buy a microscope, but then some crap went wrong with my truck and I had to pay to fix it. But this here is what I'm talking about. So this is called a hemocytometer. It may just look like a weird piece of glass, but it's a special slide. And you know what? I think I might actually be able to show you what's on it. So it's a slide with a grid on it. So you put your sample on it and it lets you, makes it easier to count how many cells there are, right? Because the cells fall within the grid. I'll see if I can take a picture. I got this stupid little thing. I bought this, I don't know, over a decade ago. It's like a special macro lens that you can put on your camera or put on your smartphone. And it's not really meant for the phone I have now, but I'm going to see if I can take a picture of the grid on this hemocytometer. So normally a hemocytometer is used for counting blood cells. But I have it. There we go. I'll put a... Did that show up? Yeah, that's showing up. I'll throw it up on the screen for you guys to see. But yeah, so I have two of those and a whole bunch of slide covers. But no microscope. At least not yet. Hopefully I can get one this year. If not, definitely next year. And then what else do I have? Um, I have a friend, acquaintance, who sells firewood. But sometimes he also takes in hardwood. So mostly it's softwood, but sometimes he also takes in hardwood and sells it for whatever purpose people want it. So I bought this here. It's a moisture meter. Oh, how the hell does this cap come off again? Yeah, right. You know, stab those things in the wood and it tells me the moisture of the wood. You can also do it supposedly without the pins. I'm not sure exactly how that works. But yeah, I test hardwoods if he's seasoning them. And if it meets my requirements, which is essentially just, you know, if it hits if it hits 15% moisture, then I'll take a sample with me. And I can try that, try aging with it. That's pretty much it. Most of the other stuff you've probably already seen through my various videos. You know, I got like simple little things like glass stir rods and you've seen the weigh boats before the little plastic containers I put chemicals in. You've seen my stir plates. Yep, yeah, that's about it. So, oh yeah, and I showed the air pump. This is for when I ferment in my trash can and I need to oxygenate it, like I talked about in the dissolved oxygen video. But yeah, that's all the stuff I use. Obviously you don't need the same amount of stuff as me, but I've been collecting this stuff for a long time and I do some weird experiments to try and expand my knowledge. I also want to thank my Patreons, specifically Chris, 
Lyndon and Dave. So I hope you learned something. Please click like and subscribe if you want to learn more and uh, have a great week.